show is for a talk worldwide with some news from the world of boxing. So y'all know what time it is. You ain't in a rush to get concussed. Well, a wonderful night of boxing. You know, we ain't got time for it all because I repeat, the NBA playoffs is going down. So we got other things to do. You know what I mean? But it was some fights going on. And I, you know, didn't cover one of them, should have. But let's just say a few of them. We're going to talk about it. One we ain't going to talk about is Teofio Lopez or Javante Davis. I'm going to hold up on them there, too, and check it out and get back to y'all what I think about that. Because those two up-and-comers that's going to be doing things in the future. But, hey, both victories. We'll just probably break them down in a day or two. We'll get around to it. Or we'll mention it. But, anyway, let's mention something. Um, pretty significant fight in the heavyweight division. Andy Ruiz, you guys. Andy Ruiz has only lost one time. He was facing Devin, uh, Dimitrinko. Dimitrinko lost about five times. But Dimitrinko only losing to them good ones. You know, lost to the Kulev, Pulevs of the world, stuff like that. You know, everybody not beating Dimitrinko. Right? But uh, Andy Ruiz stops him in five. And that's pretty good for somebody about 6'2", because I think Dimitrinko is about 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, so, you know, you know, and like I say, Dimitrinko has only lost to the best of the best. He hasn't lost to anybody. And actually, I would say Dimitrinko's uh, uh, resume is even better than Andy Ruiz. Andy Ruiz's resume, his best win is Dimitrinko. Or do you guys want to go with Sergei Laokovic? Man, I'm pretty sure most people don't want to go with him because that's the one that was on convulsing when Deontay Wilder hit it. Now, when I told you that he's not a bum because the guy had a title. And uh, my man Dimitrinko beat him. And, you know, I mean, no, Andy Ruiz beat him, I think it was. So, I'm telling you, uh, uh, Andy Ruiz's resume is not that great. It's really not that great. But he handles Dimitrinko and get it, did it convincingly. So, you know, the man's back. Um, you know, the only one loss was when you get a split decision in somebody else's backyard, then you will always be able to argue that you probably would have won that fight in neutral uh, territory. Always. No matter how many times it happened. You get a split decision at somebody else's crib, it was probably your fight. So that's what Andy Ruiz can say about fighting Joseph Parker. Everybody you talk to, that's a close fight, period. Joseph Parker fan, Andy Ruiz fan, doesn't matter. It was a close fight. Joseph Parker got the nod on that. I had Joseph up. Right? But, uh, you know what I'm saying? You know, I rolled with Joe. I bet I had Joseph up. I wouldn't have if I didn't think he was winning. But it was close. And it was in his hometown. So, at the end of the day, Andy Ruiz, what I don't like about him is he's just not staying busy. But other than that, we know he's a great boxer. And look what happens. So, he's back in the mix. And let's see what happens going forward. Now, hopefully, he can fight in three months. And we don't have to be talking about him in 2020 or 21. Right? He has to stay down, keep it, keep it moving, stay grinding. That's what he has to do because he's a good, he's a good boxer, period. Right? Homeboy, too. So that's what's up. So he handled his business. Welcome back to the heavyweight division. Let's see what's happening going forward. Another heavyweight contest on the other side of the pond with Dave Allen and your boy Lucas Brown. Now, Dave Allen lost about four times. Right? Dave Allen lost about four times, man. Uh, but he was looking good as that fight he came. He was, you know, he's a journeyman now, basically. But Nick Webb. Thought he was going to come in there at 12-0 and got knocked out messing with Luke, uh, with your boy Dave Allen. And Dave Allen, when we first got signed to fight Lucas Brown, he's thinking, well, you ain't want to mess with Lucas Brown. Because Lucas Brown, to me, his resume is better than a lot of people think. And Lucas Brown got beat by Dillian White, and now he was beat, uh, stopped here with a body blow by uh, Dave, Dave Allen, which I didn't expect. I thought Lucas Brown coming in fit would handle Dave Allen. But Dave Allen is showing, hey, you know what? I'm resilient. You don't hit me, but I'm going to hit you back. Body blows can win fights. Now, Lucas Brown, man, he, on his resume, I, I see, uh, you know, you won't say Gavron, no, that's nothing. But Richard Towers was undefeated when he beat him, all right? Richard Towers was undefeated when he beat him, you know, and he beat Shakael, right, and, and, and over there. And I forget exactly where Shakael come from, but not Uzbekistan. I forget where it was, but definitely he went over there and handled his business over there beating Ruslan and Shakael, and that's not easy to do. So, you know, Lucas Brown, we know he's not the greatest boxer in the world, but he, you know, he was undefeated for a long time and took Dillian White to do something about that. And Lucas Brown was not fit in that fight. So you're thinking Lucas Brown's going to take care of Dave Allen. Didn't happen. Dave Allen took care of that one. Let's see if Dave Allen uh, uh, stays serious. When I was hearing about George Grove talking about he's not serious enough. If he stays serious, you know, Dave Allen is someone who, one of those guys who can take a punch. And, you know, they stay coming at you. Like, like I think Dominic Brazil is. 
is I'm going to take some, but uh, hopefully I hope you can take some back. Because if you're not, you're going to have a problem with these kind of guys. So it's good. And those are the kind of guys you need in the heavyweight division. You know what I mean? You just need those kind of guys in the heavyweight division. So uh, kudos and uh, props to Dave Allen for taking out Lucas Brown. Let's see where Lucas Brown goes from here. He probably go to somebody thinking that they're going to beat him now because he lost twice and then they get beat because he looked like he was pretty in pretty good uh, shape. So let's see what happens going forward with that. Uh, but the other fight, which I should have probably did a, a video for, but I'm kind of disappointed, was uh, Danny Garcia. We are going to the welterweight division versus Adrian Granados. And, uh, you know, I just think Granados coming up in weight. And Gar uh, uh, Danny Garcia, I was hoping that he would, you know, take someone else. But everybody's kind of busy. But, you know, but I was hoping he's taking somebody else. Because, you know, Danny Garcia is a guy that I roll with. I think that he's a good fighter. He's just not one of those fighters that's so flashy. But he's handling his business. And his left, left hook is coming from another planet. Be careful about that. Ask Amir Khan about that and, and anybody else about that left hook. Uh, so, and Granados is, is one of those tough guys. He's been in tough fights all the time and wrong end of decisions, giving everybody all they can handle and moving in whatever way he needs to to handle, to take challenges. So, Granados is somebody that you know is going to uh, handle his business. It's going to be a good fight, fighting Granados. And that's what I was thinking before the fight. I think Granados will probably be leaving when Danny Garcia starts, you know, landing and landing heavy shots. But Danny Garcia came in this fight to let people know, know there's, there's levels. Granada's never been stopped. Danny Garcia stops him. Had him down three or four times. First time with a well, mean left hook where kudos for Granados to get up, gather himself, but next round and feel it positive again. Right? You got to give him that. Granados is definitely a tough, tough character. But Danny Garcia handles his business stopping the guy and, you know, uh, look good doing it. Throwing heavy shots, uh, pretty good defense, too. You know, yeah, it's underestimated Danny Garcia. He's the kind of guy, you know, like if you anybody watching the NBA right now, right, and you're watching the playoffs, or if you wasn't watching the playoffs the whole season, it's a dude in Denver, Jokic, Nikola Jokic, right? Big center, right? Big old dude, but, you know, can barely move. Can barely move. There's no athleticism going on. Probably can't do nothing else but play basketball because he he's not a great athlete. But what? I'm smart and I do everything correctly. And being smarter than you most of the time is enough, right? I don't need to be jumping all out the gym. He can shoot me seven foot tall and won't not, barely ever dunk the ball. Don't need to. I ain't jumping up there unless I got to, man. Is that important enough for me to jump up there? Playing like he's an old dude. You know how old people like, man, I ain't jumping. Shoot, you know, the worst part about jumping is landing. I ain't gonna shoot, man. I ain't get all that. Is that rebound important? Is this the fourth quarter? That's how old people start thinking. That's how he played. And it works for him. Danny Garcia is not flashy. But come in here weak and something gonna happen to you. Right? That's the bottom line with Danny Garcia. Uh, Sean Porter and, and Keith Thurman have been welterweights, are big welterweights. Danny Garcia come up from weight. The handle has been dominated 140 before he left. And coming up there, now he's a 147, you know, but he gave both of them good good matches. Both of those matches, if it's Keith Thurman or or uh, your boy Sean Porter, is like, hey, the book is closed on that. They dominated Danny Garcia. I don't want to see a rematch. No, you're not saying that. So now that Danny Garcia has took care of Granados, which he should have, now he's saying what whoever, Pacquiao, um, Thurman, or Spence. And that's exactly who we should be looking for right about now. Pacquiao, Thurman, or Spence. Actually, it should be Thurman or Spence, but Pacquiao at any time, right? And it'd be a good match because Pacquiao's hands are faster, and Pacquiao be running up in on Danny Garcia. Pacquiao piece him up a little bit. Danny Garcia's eye might get a little bit something. He might get a little bit cut, and then boom, left hook. And the, and the match is all up, you know, <laughs> tied up now all of a sudden. Be a good match. Danny Garcia against anybody. So congratulations to him back on the map. And, um, that's pretty much a night in boxing. We left two fights out on purpose, right? We'll get to them. But like I say, uh, Andy Ruiz takes out Demetrinko. Dave Allen takes out your boy <laughs> Lucas Brown with a body blow. And Danny Garcia uh, stops with Granados. And that is the first one to do it. Pretty good stuff. Dome Sports Talk. Worldwide. And we are out of here, y'all.